good morning good afternoon good evening whenever you are watching this video let me welcome you all to our channel future endeavors okay so just let's move on and quickly uh, start our discussion about the topic so in the previous class as you have watched we have discussed about the magnet magnetic field concept of magnet and magnetic field we have also seen through an experiment which was done by Oersted that current flowing through an electric wire can produce magnetic field. So, in the previous class, we have discussed about the properties of the magnetic field lines, and we have discussed how a magnet or the magnetic field can be represented by magnetic field lines. Today, we will be discussing about the magnetic field produced by current carrying loop. Okay. So, I hope you are all enjoying our video and please do comment if you have any doubt, any query regarding our topics or if you want any other topics to be discussed, please let us know. We will be happy to help you all. Okay. So, let us come to the point. So, the next thing that we are going to discuss, next topic that we are going to discuss is magnetic field due to current carrying loop magnetic field due to a current carrying loop ok so magnetic field magnetic field due to current carrying loop ok so you see that the that we have seen that whenever the current is flowing through a wire, what you observe that the magnetic compass negative deflects, which proves that there is a magnetic field developed around the current carrying wire. So, if I consider a loop, what do you mean by loop? A closed path, a closed uh, enclosure. Okay. So, if I consider a wire in the form of a loop, you will see that it will also produce magnetic field. In fact, the loop produces magnetic field, magnet or the bias is a magnet with two poles. Okay. So, if I consider a current carrying loop like this, say if you have a current carrying loop like this, this is a single wire, single wire, single loop. So, that there must be some kind of connections that causes the flow of current in this wire. There is obviously some source which I have not shown in the figure, but there is some source attached to this wire which causes the current to flow in the loop. Now what happens when current flows through this loop, a magnetic field is produced on the other side of this loop. Okay, And this loop actually behaves like a magnet. Now uh, this loop is something like uh, the bangles that, uh, bangles that uh, women wear on their hands or it can be a, just like a ring, so the structure is like a ring, okay. So it's a single loop of wire through which current is flowing. Now, if current is flowing, it will generate a magnetic field around it. Now, how to determine which phase of the loop behaves as a north pole and which phase of the loop behaves as a south pole? Okay. Now, see, we are sure that it will generate some magnetic field, and we have also experimentally found out that it it, it, it generates some kind of magnetic field. And now to determine that which direction, it is not always possible for us to take a bar, take a magnetic compass and determine which phase behaves as the north pole and which behaves as the which phase behaves as the south pole. So in order to uh, simplify our process, we have uh, we have just uh, figured out some way through which we can determine that which phase acts as the north pole and which phase acts as the south pole. So if you see, if, if the current flowing through this loop and you are seeing from this phase. Okay, you see if I say that the current is flowing in the anti-clockwise direction, in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so if, if the current is flowing in the anti-clockwise direction, then how can I determine the magnetic field at this phase? See, if I if I just take this, okay, like this, the if you take your right hand, right hand, okay, right hand palm and just curl your fingers along the direction of the current, along the direction of the current. Now you see the thumb is coming out out of the board coming out of the board okay 
So if I consider this kind of structure, you know, the thumb is coming out of the board. So obviously, you know, in the previous class we have discussed that magnetic field lines emerge out of the north pole outside the magnet. So definitely, this phase of the loop acts as the north pole. Okay. So this phase acts as the north pole. So whenever you see that the phase of the current, or, uh, phase of the loop in which the current you are seeing is flowing in anti-clockwise direction, that phase behaves as the north pole. So I can symbolically represent it like this. So north pole is denoted by the letter N like this. Okay. So the current flowing can be represented like this. And so whenever you see this kind of symbol, that is you remember this, that current is flowing in the anti-clockwise direction means it is behaving as the north pole of the magnet. Okay. Now obviously we think of just one uh, just consider another thing that when you are seeing the loop from this side, from this side, then you are seeing that the current is flowing in the clock anti-clockwise direction. Now just just imagine you see this loop from the other side, from the other side. Say my hand, the plane of my hand is the plane in which the loop is lying. And if you consider the loop like this, okay, when you are seeing this phase, this is this is you are seeing anti-clockwise direction current, anti-clockwise. Now anti-clockwise. Now I will rotate my finger in the same direction and show you the other side. See. Now see, in which direction you are seeing that the current is moving? It is, it is clockwise, isn't it? I am moving the moving my finger in the same direction, but you are seeing my opposite side of the hand. So the reverse face you are seeing. So on from one side you will be seeing that the current is flowing clockwise. Obviously on the other side you will be seeing that the current is flowing anti-clockwise. It will be different. So on the face on which the current is flowing anti-clockwise, sorry clockwise, that face that phase will behave as the as the south pole of the magnet south pole of the magnet so south pole the letter s is denoted like this symbol like this so it indicates that the south pole is the phase on which the current is flowing in the clockwise direction okay so just remember these two diagrams, it will help you to understand which phase of the loop is acting as which pole. Okay, so this, are the, this is the process by which you can determine which phase of the loop behaves as which pole. Okay. So this is the field generated by current carrying loop and you, see, and you see that if I consider a single layer of loop on my on, on present on the plane of my palm, then obviously the magnetic field lines will come out from one side and will enter on the other side as we have seen in the previous class as the case is in case of a bar magnet okay oh, fine so this is the magnetic field due to a current carrying loop now if i consider that the loop does not have only one single term rather it has many terms then also the same same thing will happen so uh, related to this related to this topic is another topic uh, is another uh, thing that i would like to discuss is this solenoid Okay, so what is solenoid? What is solenoid? Just this is related to this topic, so I am just discussing it here. Okay, so what is solenoid? Now see, solenoid. Okay, solenoid is something which you have observed. See, I think everybody of you have seen uh, that in some pens, the pen that you write with, in some pens there is a spring inside, the dot pens, isn't it? that you push and uh, push from the upside uh, the uh, nib comes out and the push, the, uh, the moment you push uh, you put from uh, you can push it from the upside the nib goes into the pen okay that kind of pen are called dot pens now in the dot pens if you have opened the dot pen you have seen a spring inside it isn't it that spring just imagine it on a larger scale it is a solenoid that structure is called a solenoid so solenoid is nothing but a structure like this if we just enlarge it, it will be a structure like this. I am just seeing it longitudinally. Okay. So this is the structure of a solenoid. Fine. So this is what is what you call as a solenoid. You can also imagine solenoid as a as hydraulic spring. Hydraulic spring that is present in the say the in the bikes, isn't it? You have you must have watched the hydraulic springs in the bikes. That is also you can consider that that uh, structure to be also a solenoid. Now what happens in a solenoid? We, uh, we connect this solenoid to a we connect this solenoid to a source okay so we connect this solenoid to a source and when we do so when we do so it causes a current to flow okay 
So here you can connect any kind of source. I am not mentioning uh, the source name. Just I am saying that there is a power source. Okay. So this power source causes the current to flow in the solenoid. Fine. And as a result, the current flows in the solenoid, and if this solenoid behaves as a purely bar magnet. And in this case also, if you just take imagine, at one face of the solenoid you will see that the current is flowing clockwise. Okay, and on the other face you will be seeing that the current is flowing in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so one face behaves as a north pole, and the other face behaves as a south pole. Say if I consider that in this case, in this case. This face, this side face, behaves as north pole, and this side face behaves as south pole. Then what happens? The magnetic field lines, the magnetic field lines goes out like this. The magnetic field lines goes out like this. Okay, okay, and inside, so outside it will go like this, and it will come in this. Okay, and inside these lines will come from the south pole to the north pole. South pole to the north pole. Okay. So this is the direction of the magnetic field, as you can consider in a bar magnet. The same thing happens here also. Okay. So this is a solenoid. So solenoid is nothing but a helical spring-like structure in which current is flowing through, and it is generating a magnetic field. Sometimes the solenoid may also contain a core inside this hollow spring structure. And that core may be made up of say soft iron. It helps in increasing the magnetic field, the strength of the magnet that is being created by the solenoid. Okay, so this is solenoid. Okay, now we will be coming to the next topic, electromagnet. I think the concept of this current flowing through the loop is clear to all of you. Okay, now let us consider the next topic, the electromagnetic electromagnet. And the field generated due to an electromagnet. Okay. So what is an electromagnet? Now coming to the next point, electromagnet. So you see electromagnet. Okay. Now you see the magnets that we that we obtain naturally, the magnets that we obtain naturally are having not much strength. They are having a very less strength in comparison to the works that we need to do with the magnets. Okay, so in order to overcome the problem of the strength, what we do, we actually use make use of electromagnets. Okay, so electromagnets. What are electromagnets? Now see, electromagnets are magnets that are being generated by electricity. Now, as you have already understood or known that when current flows through a wire. It generates a magnetic field, so obviously I can we can utilize this property to generate or to manufacture electromagnets. Now already I have shown you the structure of solenoid. So as I have said that the source, what does actually the what what does actually the source do? The source forces current to the solenoid, isn't it? The solenoid structure that we have drawn. What does the source do? The source just causes the current to flow through this. Wire structure, isn't it? So if I say consider, if I connect a DC source, or a, say DC source is a say battery, okay, or a cell. There is a slight difference between battery and cell. We will be discussing in some other day. If I just connect a cell across the structure and with a key, if I just switch on the key, that is close this key, okay, the current will start flowing through this wire in this direction, and it will. Behave as a magnet. Now, this kind of magnet are called electromagnet. Okay, so electromagnet. The meaning is clear from the very word that you are using. It magnetism developed using using developed with the help of electricity or electrical energy. Okay, so this is electromagnet. So, why are we using electromagnet? What are its advantages in comparison to the permanent magnet? A permanent magnet. Is natural magnet. It can be natural, or sometimes it is also being made artificially. But so far, a permanent magnet. And if I compare a permanent magnet with this kind of electromagnet, what are the advantages? First of all, see. First of all, see. If I say what are the characteristics or advantages of this electromagnet? First, let us come to the first point. Advantages of this electromagnet. Advantages. 
Okay, what are the advantages of this electromagnet? Now see, this electromagnet, see, you can, uh, whenever you want, you can create the magnetic field and whenever you want, you can shut down the magnetic field or switch off the magnetic field with the help of this switch or key that you have. So, this first is that the magnetic field, magnetic field, magnetic field can be switched on and off as required. So this is the first advantage. What is the second advantage? What is the second advantage? The second advantage is that you can change the polarity of the magnet. You can change the polarity of the magnet. Polarity of the magnet. How can, how can you do this? See, remember one thing, when you have discussed the Oerstedt experiment, you have seen that Oerstedt, while observing the deflection, when he changed the direction of the current through the wire, he observed that the, he observed that the magnetic field also reversed, that deflection was also, also reversed, isn't it? So obviously if I change the direction of the current through the wire or through the solenoid, through the electromagnet, then we can change the polarity of the magnet, okay? And what is the third advantage of using electromagnet? Third advantage is that you can change the strength, change the strength of the magnetic field. You can change the very strength of the magnetic field. Magnetic field. Now, how can you change the very strength of the magnetic field? There are two ways. There are two ways. Okay, so what are the ways by which you can change the strength of this magnetic field? One way, first way that by which you can change the strength of the magnetic field is you can increase the number of turns. So, these are the turns. See, these are the turns. Number of turns. If I increase the number of turns in a particular length, the magnetic field, strength of the magnetic field increases. So, we can change the magnetic field strength of the magnetic field by varying the number of turns. This is one fact. And the other fact is, other fact is you can, you can actually increase or decrease the current flowing through the wire and change the magnetic field. Same. So, second point is by varying current flowing through wire. So, these are the two ways by which you can change the strength of the magnetic field. Generated by a electro magnet. So these are the ways. These are the ways by which you can adjust the strength of the magnetic field. Two ways. And I think you have all of you have understood the advantages of electromagnet. Now consider when I am when I am, when I am uh, comparing this electromagnet to the permanent magnet. So I think I think the comparison is quite a bit clear because these advantages are the main things that you can compare with the electro magnet, permanent magnet. A permanent magnet can you change the strength of a permanent magnet? No. Can you change the polarity of the permanent magnet? No. Can you uh, switch on or switch off the magnetic field of a permanent magnet as and when required? No. So these are the main comparisons or uh, advantages of a permanent electromagnet over a permanent magnet. Okay. Another thing that I want to uh, uh, that I want to say that is electromagnet and electromagnet electromagnet or uh, is generally made up of soft iron. Soft iron. Okay. As I said just a few minutes back that this solenoid can have a core inside it. It can have a core like this. It can have a core inside this or sometimes the core is also sometimes not inside it. So the, the core just helps to increase the strength of the magnet. Okay. And generally in case of the electromagnets the core is used so that I can get a more stronger field. The core is made of a soft iron. Whereas in case of a permanent magnet, permanent magnet, okay. What do we use? We use steel as the core. So steel is used for making permanent magnet. Why? This is because the 
एबिलिटी ऑफ स्टील टू रिटेन द मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टीज मोर देन सॉफ्ट आयरन सॉफ्ट आयरन कैन बी मैग्नेटाइज वेरी इजिली इट कैन ऑल्सो गेट डिमैगनेटाइज दैट मच इजी वाइल एज स्टील नीड्स टाइम टू गेट मैग्नेटाइज बट वेन वंस मैग्नेटाइज इट डज नॉट इजिली गेट डिमैगनेटाइज हेल्स इट इज यूज फॉर अ पार्मानेंट मैग्नेट सो आई थिंक द कंपेरिजन बिटवीन इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेट एंड इमारमेंट मैग्नेट इज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ओके सो टुडे वी विल बी एंडिंग आवर लेक्चर हियर ऑन द नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द फोर्स दैट अ कंडक्टर एक्सपीरियंसेस व्हेन प्लेसिंग अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सो टिल देन थैंक यू टाटा टेक केयर गुड बाय